Today, I'm going to show you why is Russia the richest country in natural resources on the planet? Its economy does not reflect its capabilities. Before the start of the video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more content, subscribe to the top quality channel. Let's get started. Russia, the world's largest transcontinental country and spanning 11 time zones, is richly endowed with natural resources. This vast country plays a crucial role in global energy and resource markets and is the main trading partner for many of its neighbors. Russia holds the world's largest natural gas reserves, the second largest coal reserves, and the eighth largest oil reserves. It is one of the largest producers and exporters of natural gas, the third largest oil producer, and the second largest oil exporter. But how wealthy is Russia? How does Russia's wealth compare to other countries? And how are the returns on this wealth distributed amongst Russian citizens? In 2022, the average Russian citizen was 1.8 times wealthier than in 2000. But despite strong growth, Russia's per capita wealth is still only about a quarter of that in OECD countries. From 2000 to 2022, Russia's per capita wealth grew multiple times faster than that of high-income countries, but from a much lower base. The performance in per capita wealth growth was uneven, however, and has weakened in recent years due to stagnant growth in human capital and the decline in oil and gas wealth. On average, Russia's return on wealth, that is, the ratio of GDP to wealth, has been around 7% for the 2000 to 2022 period, which is similar to the average of upper middle income and high income countries. However, it is lower than the 8 to 10% return on wealth in Eastern European countries, such as Bulgaria, Hungary, and Poland. Measuring the evolution of two measures of shared prosperity, income growth of the bottom 40% of the population and growth in median income, reveals that, while sizable during the boom years, Russia's shared prosperity premium has been shrinking in recent years. Human capital comprises the largest share of wealth in Russia, at 46%. By comparison, human capital comprises 70% of wealth composition in OECD countries. From 2000 to 2022, Russia's human capital wealth per capita grew rapidly, but has slowed during the last 10 years. If Russia's human capital continues to grow at its 2000 to 2022 average rate of 3.5%, it will take about 50 years to catch up with the OECD. Russia's dependence on its non-renewable assets poses a specific development challenge, with its large share of carbon-based wealth facing increased risk due to future price uncertainty and large-scale attempts at global decarbonization. To maximize the return on wealth, Russia needs policies that rebalance its wealth portfolio. Policy Directions Rebalancing the portfolio and mitigating the risks of stranded assets will require Russia to diversify its wealth portfolio away from its fossil fuel sector and towards other productive capital, in particular, human capital. This will involve, in the short term, maintaining the fiscal rule, a necessary though not sufficient condition for diversification. The new fiscal rule has substantially curbed the economy from oil price volatility, and to further entrench its credibility, it will be important to refrain from the investment of the National Welfare Fund in domestic assets. Sustaining Focus on Human Capital A sustained policy focus on increasing the share of human capital and increasing returns on the stock of human capital wealth will help. Measures to improve Russia's human capital performance, education, and health include the following. Further developing Russia's university education potential, improving the quality of Russia's vocational education system, improving problem-solving skills of Russian students, emphasizing primary care disease detection and prevention, and increasing healthcare efficiency and financing. Increasing produced capital. Russia's produced capital per capita is almost a fourth of the OECD average. Increasing produced capital would require improving the investment climate, which could be done by creating a level playing field for firms, enhancing competition conditions, and streamlining regulatory requirements. This would mean reversing the trend towards cartelization of the economy, especially in public procurement promoting competitive neutrality principles among state-owned enterprises, or SOEs, and private sector actors, 
and ensuring the transparency of state support and privileges to minimize competition distortions. Better managing natural capital. Although renewable resources make up a smaller share of Russia's natural capital, they can produce benefits in perpetuity if managed sustainably. An immediate priority is reducing forest fires, which are the main factor driving forest loss. Russia is home to 20% of the world's forest resources, and between 2015 through 2018, fires on both forest and non-forest lands increased 2.4 times. Another area is green finance, which could help mobilize the required funding for financing sustainable growth. As a rough approximation, in 2017, Russia's forests, excluding reserve forests, provided absorption of more than 638 million tons of CO2 equivalent, or around 30,000 billion rubles, roughly the equivalent of $500 billion USD. Distributing returns on wealth more equitably. The waxing and waning of two measures of shared prosperity, growth in incomes of the bottom 40% of the population, and median income, coupled with the overall macroeconomic conditions, underscores the importance of increasing returns to Russia's wealth, as well as pursuing policies that distribute these returns more equitably. One of the problems facing resource-rich countries and threatening poor economic performance is not necessarily the presence of abundant natural resources but instead the structures of control and ownership that these nations often choose to govern their resource sectors. It is commonly agreed that private enterprises are more efficient than state-owned operations, and this contrast can be seen in Russia between the large state-owned gas sector under Gazprom and, until 2005, the almost entirely privately owned oil companies. As a result, much of Russia's development between 2000 and 2005 was largely due to the export of oil, with the oil industry experiencing significant growth of almost 70%, compared to the stagnation taking place in the gas sector. The Russian government's involvement in certain strategic areas, especially the energy and financial sectors, has had several detrimental effects on the development of resource production. In publicly owned companies, the state's management of foreign investments has been poor due to excessive restrictions and unclear legislation surrounding foreign investments. This has resulted in discouraging outside investors from participation in Russia's energy industries and ultimately inhibited the area's potential for growth. The government's reinvestment policies are also highly flawed, with a focus on the acquisition of assets abroad rather than the development of resource extraction within the country, undermining the sector's prospects for possible growth in the future. However, manufacturing industries were not subject to the same constraints due to the large proportion of privately owned companies. As a result, the investment environment in the manufacturing industries improved, as did the perception of foreign investors who were attracted by the relatively moderate cost of production and the highly skilled Russian labor market. It is clear from this that most state enterprises were underachievers and subject to the often politically motivated goals of the government. However, ironically, the unattractiveness of the Russian energy sector to foreign investors, despite the potentially high profitability, allowed manufacturing industries to take advantage of this, achieving significant growth where the theory of Dutch disease predicted an erosion in manufacturing and eventual deindustrialization. The privatization of the oil industry is one example of how Russia was in a better position than most other resource-dependent emerging markets. But it is also clear that the country is not without state management and has the potential to forsake productivity in favor of state control. Despite this, the mismanagement of public sectors has, in many ways, aided in the short-term prevention of Dutch disease. Nevertheless, it is unlikely that any such future mishandling will have any feasible future benefits, with the continuation of such policies probably resulting in economic stagnation resource dependency, and an inability to develop a fully accountable political system. It could be suggested that many of the issues experienced by Russia are not the result of a resource curse, but are the effect of the state ownership curse. It is very difficult to use the conventional explanations to understand the impact that natural resource abundance has had on both the Russian political system and economy, 
This is largely due to several distinct differences between Russia's circumstances and those traditionally seen in other resource-dependent emerging markets. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the top quality channel, and turn on post notifications to see more of our future videos. With that said, keep enjoying our videos, and I'll see you in the next video.